Have you been in an accident that wasn't your fault? Feeling overwhelmed and unsure what to do next? Look no further. The personal injury attorneys at Phillips Law Firm are here to help. Phillips Law Firm understands that accidents can turn your life upside down. That's why they're dedicated to fighting for the compensation you deserve and to making the process as stress-free as possible. Don't wait any longer. Call now, 1-800-JUSTICE, or visit justiceforyou.com. Now, the greatest story never told with Miles and Thrill. Oh, Michelos, uh, thank you so much for downloading the greatest story never told. We appreciate bitch. it. What, it's wait, a play brand it again. new No, no, uh, no just what, wait. What, what, play it again. Do? Just no, start well, again. Because I wanted the applause. Oh, I God. Want, hey, man, look, I want it to sound like we're awesome. All right? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, take two. Just hit it again. Just hit it again. No one will ever know. Now, the greatest story never told with Miles and Thrill. Okay. Guess my button's working too. See, so don't you feel better? Yeah. Oh, welcome once again to the greatest story never told. If you've been downloading the podcast, we appreciate it. It's a, it's a, it's a newer podcast. We're just trying to get into the groove here. Uh, we have made it to episode number nine. Jesus, and since really? it is the holiday season, and we're going to take a little time off here for the holidays, we figured we would give you a little bit of a what we'll call we'll we'll label this the ho 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 down. That is. <laughs> Trust me, Mike, there's more to it than that, but yeah. yes, that we is a fantastic We used to have a uh, party every year in uh, Baltimore called the Ho 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 Down, and uh, basically what we would do was we would throw a Christmas party for the fans of our show because at the time when we worked at CBS Baltimore, they didn't do holiday parties. But they you would, need to understand They wouldn't pay this. for them. They wouldn't. We thought it was a great idea because it is a good idea, and the company didn't want to do it. So we had mentioned it on the air there's a guy that owned a local, what do you call like a, it? Like, a, like, a, like an event space. hall kind of right. place. So yeah. he said, hey, guys, if you want to do it, right, free of charge to you, man, uh, do it here. So we we did it one year, and it was unbelievable. I cannot believe. Thousands of people. I mean, this place packed, and it was spectacular. I mean, it really, truly was. It was fun, man. It's true camaraderie. And then the following year, uh, the company got involved in the Sorry to go. Well, no, they but but, but here's what they did. Wow. They realized that they could monetize this. So instead of just having their own company party, they could sell sponsorships. By the way, they didn't because they weren't even good enough to do that. But we but we had some great sponsors that stopped by and like lended their services, you know, to our just, party. And the thing and was, we had a blast, man. Just to be a part of it. They don't want anything. You didn't have to mention yeah. them on there. Like they just wanted to be a part mm-hmm. of the party, man. And uh Keep in mind, these are the same two bosses. Bill Pasha uh, was involved with the formation of the uh, of the party. He was a very much an advocate for us doing this. Uh, the other two main bosses, uh, Dave Labrosi and uh, Bob Phillips, once again, were complete jerks about it. And oh, they did not oh, want to have any. I mean, like, just we're keep sorry one thing in mind. We made people happy. These two people are the worst individuals on earth. <laughs> anyway, we move on. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about holiday parties. I'm going to tell you a very quick story about a holiday party, and then I'll yield to Steve because his holiday party is much more. But they all tie in together. I, I will so, say what, before you start your holiday parties, understand I was not working at this place on this day, but where Miles' story happened was the place I, the last place I worked as a chef. In Baltimore City, Correct. and I'm very familiar with this particular thing Miles will explain, and basically the first time he told me the story, I'm like, oh, you guys were the people that destroyed sure. this sure. thing that right. I heard about. Okay, so uh, so I worked at a different station before this, and we were owned by iHeartMedia. Now, they did do their Christmas party seriously. We had a fantastic venue for our holiday party. Like iHeart does not spare money. That's No, they're top, top notch, just completely awesome. And there was this place in uh, Baltimore that not only was an incredible museum of newer art and other things. It's the American Visionary Art Museum. The idea behind it was these are the art that they showcased was by untrained artists. Not these people went Correct. to school, nothing like that. But the art was very weird. It was different. It was unique. But all of it that they showcased there, and to this day they still do, is spectacular. It is. And keep in mind, Baltimore is is really good on displays, arts, museums. There's a sanitation museum in Baltimore that's phenomenal. How we treat your poop. Teaching you how that, that, like, even back to the ancient Egyptians, yeah. to the Romans, to the Mayans, to the Incans, how we've disposed of human waste over the years. It's actually fascinating. It's, it, it really is fascinating. So the museums in Baltimore, whatever you think of Baltimore, top-notch stuff, right? So exactly what Steve's saying. This is modern art that's not <laughs> these are guys that you know have a ridiculous talent but but have nine no out of ten of them there's something wrong Banksy with them as we would basically. say Banksy right? would be in there 
15 you had years ago. Criminals, you had right. people with mental disabilities, but when they did and executed their art, their art was, I mean, so, phenomenal, mind blowing, mind bending. And this is trays of many crab balls from Baltimore, uh, shrimp. Uh, you know, oyster shoes. I may have you been working it. there then, because I feel like that's all we did. I mean, Katie, it was, you it was sons just, of bitches. It was high end, great food, great art. You walked around, you drank wine. It was kind of one of those places. I'm drinking beer, but either way, <laughs> it was nice. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep this quick. There was a woman that we worked for, and or worked with, and she was a she was a sweetheart. She was just the best person in the world. Uh, she was a little overweight. Um, what is a literal overweight? I mean, be honest. Give me dimensions, height, and she and was probably about five two. All right, and she might have been three hundred plus pounds. Wow! So okay. she was every bit as wide as she was. Yes, she was a little bit overweight. She was but well she spoken. She was a very and is, I'm assuming, uh, disposition wise, a very happy person. It, listen, cherry she's rose five cheeks. Two, Three hundred pounds. Thing. It doesn't mean I don't like you. It I does will, not mean you're a horrible person. I just wanted the dimensions. Okay, but the but, human but you know ball. this office person. So every time a new employee was hired on the male side of things, it was: Is this person single? Are they dating anyone? Do I have a chance? It didn't matter if it was a new salesperson. No, you don't have a chance. Who've been married you're for five, twenty-five two, years? Pounds. Could be manager. Like every new guy that came in was a potential date. Right, that's that's where she was, and she also did gastric bypass, and it didn't work because she didn't stay true to the rules. Okay. It's not magic; it right. is a process. So this is not. I mean, I'm just trying to paint this picture as far as is how this works out. All right. So we get to this wonderful location. Mm-hmm. All right, and we're enjoying everything. Now, one of the things that was on display, and you have to remember, when you display a certain individual's art. It's probably going to be at least five to ten years deep, as far as all the things they've created. Depending sure. on how much time it takes, and you know, this particular guy had done. Uh, quick backstory: the guy that did the art pieces that Miles is going to refer to had been incarcerated, and I don't know how for how long he was in jail. But in the time that he was in jail, he and all the other inmates would just give him toothpicks, and basically he would suck on these things to get them soft enough to make sculptures. And when I say sculptures, no matter what I say, you're not going to understand fully how awesome it was. One of the things he did that really stood out, he did a complete replica of the Titanic. And I want to say the replica he did was like nine feet long. He down to the deck chair. When you looked inside no, of it, it's, that's this it. was a if perfect you, if replica. If you peeled apart the levels of the Titanic, if you lifted up every floor that mm-hmm. no one could see underneath this, it was like the staircases. Everything was identical to the spec of this ship. And this is what this guy did in prison, and, and you realize his art. And by the time his art got out, I want to say he was out of prison. But yeah, he was. anyway, his work was on display, and the Titanic was just, in my opinion, that was the, focal the most piece. incredible thing you've seen. But he did, like, uh, there was a couple of ships in the Baltimore Harbor he also did. Mm-hmm. He did anything that he could replicate with toothpicks. And you would never know that the art was made with toothpicks, except, except... For this one giant piece he did, which was a wicker chair. Okay? And it was a big kind of, I don't know if it's terracotta is the right way to describe it, just kind of a big outdoor kind of a, uh, not Adirondack, but it had that, that, that bottom kind of feel to it, you know, as far as you're sitting back in the chair, you're relaxing, you're outside. A replication of that with toothpicks. So, and it's actually stunning. I mean, it, re- it it's sounds stunning. dumb, but it's, it's unbelievable. Okay. He's got 15 pieces in this in this one display. So if you're in that display, there is no mistake in the fact that everything in here mm-hmm. is made of toothpicks. You can't And they would tell you though. You can't get away from the fact that right. everything in this room is made of toothpicks. But they would tell you on the little placards next to each piece how many toothpicks it took. So like how many the years? Titanic is like 25,000 toothpicks over nine years. And this guy, you, know, you keep them in your mouth, they're soft, and you can shape them. And and, and the guy's work is unbelievable. And, and Steve's right. What he's saying is like, I softened these so we'd have a curvature. Right. Instead of a straight line. Okay. So how many parties go? Mike, I think you've already been parties go? <laughs> uh, Casey... Her name's rhymes with racy. She you she's just had said it. her name. You, you know you what? Just said, you 
You can't she act knows. like you're hiding her she name knows. when you say, okay, she knows. all right. She knows. She's not listening to this. She's long forgotten me. You'll find out. So the night goes on. What does Casey do? <laughs> she decides she's going to sit in this chair. Now, this chair is on a platform. It's not just a chair. It's on a stage with a light. There is a display behind it explaining all the things that Steve just said. How many toothpicks? All this stuff. And again, it should she, be pointed out, it's a museum. So like anything at any museum, you don't handle the she merchandise. gets up on the platform with a spotlight on this chair and decides, I'm going to sit down like a queen in the throne. Did she just need a break or was she actually just wanting to go you sit in the chair? don't sit on displays she at a museum. She the art display. Now she's going to sit in this chair. Of toothpicks. Again, unsuccessful <laughs> surgery. Sits in the chair. The entire thing fucking disintegrates. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's gone. And what I'm saying, and I told Steve this earlier. When I say that it disintegrated, <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is it's gone. There's not even, the legs aren't identifiable. It was it's a not million just... <laughs> toothpicks that are now all individual <laughs> right. toothpicks again. <laughs> right. The way he did his art was he didn't glue everything. No, he didn't. He wove things. Uh -huh. So when this thing splintered apart, it wasn't necessarily all attached. So when the back broke, the back completely fell out because all of that was interwoven. Right, every it was toothpick not, it becomes was not an individual. Super glued or right. something like that. The whole freaking thing just absolutely evaporates. What does that sound like? She's on her. It sounded like the game of pick up sticks times a million. <laughs> it was. It was. And she's on her back. Someone picks her up. Casey, what? What did you just do? I just sat in this chair. That was part of the display. Dummy. I know, but I want to sit in the chair. The chair's gone. The chair is valued retail at $25,000. This is our Christmas party. She destroyed a $25,000 chair by sitting in it. That was never intended for you to sit in. It should be pointed yes. out. Yes. Uh, her, quote, boyfriend, who was accompanying there, uh, ended up taking her home. She has no recollection of this the next day. I know all of this stuff because I found out later on. But that was a Christmas party at the place where Steve used to work. That is correct. So, lo and behold, she's still an employee of the company. She still did okay. They paid the $25,000 to this artist. And that was what happened that, that year at that Christmas party. Now, when you were there, you had a different experience. Okay. Well, this ah, man, oh, man. Trying to decide where to go. All right. So, originally, I was going to tell the story of the motorcycle helmet incident. I'll save that for another time because specifically this place, all right? So I I worked – there was a restaurant there called uh, uh, Joy America Cafe. Which app happened to cater that party. Right. And that's what we did, and it was on the top floor of this truly beautiful, stunning museum. You're looking the water. It's, it's fantastic. This is a five-star joint. I am the chef there. But that said, I'm still a derelict. So this was not Christmas. This was a New Year's party that we had, okay? And – Oh, God, this is terrible. Outside of this museum, there is this, I want to say it's like 75-foot-tall sculpture, maybe, uh, probably about 55-foot-tall sculpture called the Whirligig. And the Whirligig was made by, and now, since this point, this particular artist slash farmer, he has pieces everywhere. And he was a farmer. He took bits and pieces of things, and he would kind of create the scaffolding. And then on top of the scaffolding was this thing that got pushed by the wind, and it would spin around on a central axis, but also at the very end of it, there were, uh, how do you explain it's like, it? It's like it Appalachian like a, folk art. Saw blades, everything moving but in it mechanical was, parts. I but. mean, it's huge, it's stunning, and when the wind blow, all these different parts will start wrapping around. Well, the balcony to this particular museum, when you sat on the balcony, when this thing would spin around on a windy day, it looked like it would come in and take your head off, but honestly, you had maybe 15 feet of clearance, right? You're in no danger, but... We haven't seen this. And we got familiar with it. We're used to it. So we have our New Year's Eve party, and we did New Year's Eve. We'd cater to New Year's Eve for some other event. And at the end of it, all of us restaurant employees, hey, man, we're going to throw it on here. Sorry, Miles, I'm going a different direction on this. This just care. made me think. I mean, so I know. I know you don't care. You're an uncaring son of a bitch. Yeah. So uh, we're up there, and, and like any place, you would go outside to smoke. So we'd smoke on the balcony. That said, 
Cigarettes aren't the only thing being smoked. Everyone starts smoking weed. We're having a great time, but this was kind of our norm. This is how, God, I feel bad saying this. So, so I am the chef at this restaurant, and Rebecca Hoffberger is the name of the woman that owned the museum. This was her vision to create this thing. She raised the funds. She made it happen. And again, I, I can't take anything away from this museum. It is a stunning, brilliant, beautiful, wonderful thing that she did. And so Rebecca and I were very close. She really liked me. In spite of who I am, she liked me anyway. She's one of those people like, you know, when you get to your BS, you're an okay guy. And I, and I loved and adored her for that. But everything that's there, she pretty much owns. And it's not like she is worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. She, she put her vision to the test and got this done. So the Whirly Gig, which is this giant sculpture that gets blown by the wind that's outside, this was kind of the centerpiece to the museum, and this was the first thing that they kind of advertised to Baltimore in general to say, look, this museum is unique. It was the first and only one of its kind in America. There's one in L.A. now. But the Whirly Gig is what got people's attention. So this is kind of like your Statue of Liberty if you come to America, right? This is something, if you go to this museum, you know about it. This thing's spinning around. It's a windy night. It's January. You know, the weather is how the weather is. And we had a covered patio, so we're not getting wet or cold or anything. We're doing our thing. Well, somebody, and I don't remember who, and I don't know why they had this. They had a Shamiqua doll. Shamiqua was about three feet tall. It's a doll. There's this little black girl, and she's dressed in her dress or whatever the hell it is. And uh, it had been there for like two weeks. This is not part of the museum. Just someone brought it in. We thought it was funny. And we put her in different poses and do this stuff. Got to keep it light, right, in the kitchen. So this night, we decided, and keep in mind, I'm the chef there. So inevitably, you have to get my okay. And they decide, and, but now I'm drunk and high. So I'm no good to anybody. Game on. Game on. So we had a bunch of helium balloons from the thing that we had catered earlier. You know, Happy New Year's, all this kind of crap. And so we tied like 50 balloons to Little Shamiqua. And the idea was that we're going to tie them to Shamiqua. We're going to throw her off the deck. And she's going to float away. Shamiqua in space. Right. We just, you know, it's just like a funny thing to us. No big deal. No big deal. It's fairly harmless. So we tied all these balloons. And... All of the employees have now gathered around. We're going to watch Shamiqua take off. <laughs> My friend Amy, very close. We're still friends to this day. She now makes this big, long-ass announcement. We're going to send Shamiqua off, and we wish her well. And understand, as dumb as it is, you had a little bit of emotional attachment to sure. Shamiqua because she'd been there, and she had been the thing that allowed us to have fun you know, in, in the most stressful times. So... All these balloons are tied around her arms, and even when you let her go, I mean, she zipped right up to the ceiling of this covered patio. But it's low enough, we can grab her ankles, pull it back down. So we're like, man, Shamiqua, we've loved you. Great two weeks. It's a new year. Go have a new life. And we throw her off the balcony, and she floats away. Well, the world of gig is now spinning around. <laughs> and this thing catches these goddamn balloons with Shamiqua in it, okay? And when it catches it, because of the, the uh, not rope, what do you call it, the ribbons on the balloons, the things, you know, you attach to Shamiqua, one of the spinning parts stops spinning. Oh, so it can still rotate so around circles. Stuck. But it grabs So it looks her. like you're hanging someone. Well, that's the problem. And keep in mind, it's a little black girl, man. So this thing is just wrapping all this crap around the neck. And, but she's spinning in circles. Hanging. And, you know, the arms are hanging loose. And, man, it looked like the most racist freaking stunt ever. So we're like, oh, my God. Right? Because this Whirly Gig thing is just under a million bucks. And we're like, oh, crap. So I did the responsible thing and said, we can't admit to any of this. <laughs> we show up at work the next day. And, I mean, there's, there's kind of a big to-do because, again, the Whirly Gig, as the sculpture is called, is kind of an icon in Baltimore, particularly at this point. And all three of the major local news networks come down, and they're do, uh, uh, locally, and they're filming this thing. The papers writing about it. The free papers are writing about it. Two stations from Washington D.C. have now driven forty miles to cover this because obviously this horribly racist incident's going on. And I'm watching this on the news, right? So the world of gigs spinning, and all you see is this little black girl look like someone intentionally is hanging her, whipping around in circles over the museum. They're now talking. Happy holidays. <laughs> They're talking to Rebecca Hoffberger, the woman who owns the place, and she's devastated. She just can't believe that in a place like hers, because the only thing she ever preached, and I mean this, man, and trust me, I know how hippie she sounds. She's awesome. It's just love. Everything's love. Everything's love, man. You take care of each other. That's the best we can do, right? This is humanity. You have to have each other's back. 
She can't believe that some racist of all the places in Baltimore would come to this museum and hang this little black effigy spinning around in circles. And man, I cannot tell you how bad we felt. Now, there, <laughs> the proper thing to do, obviously, is confess. So I approached So you didn't do that? Hell no. I absolutely. I knew it. I knew there, it. I no. Knew it. I knew it. There's no chance. As soon as you said the proper thing to do, I'm like, well, this you didn't was, do that. Then. Dude, this thing spun around a circle for like two. Because the problem is they couldn't get to it because even with the fire department, you can get a ladder, but this thing weighs several tons. So when that thing's whipping around, if you're on a ladder and it hits you, like, it's over. Right? Game yeah. over for yeah. you, man. They had to spend all this time to figure out how to cut it down. So for like four days. Poor Shamiqua is whipping around circles, Jesus. hanging by her neck. Yeah, uh, you know what? And I'll be dead honest with you. I never told that story before. The people that know know because they were there, and all of us were like, "Let's not bring this up." So yeah. Rebecca, if you're listening, I'm hey, sorry, uh, but yeah, yeah. there was... there you go for the holiday season. I think we're Happy done. We're, we're done with yeah. the greatest story never told for yeah, the yeah. year. Uh, we're going to take one week off. One. One week off, Dave. Dave. Dave, one week off. Dave. Because right? no matter one like, come freaking on. week. I know. You can do this. And then we'll come back <laughs> in 2020 and pick back up, right? We start. And you know what? Our first guest is going to be uh, one of our, our special cohorts who we can throw under the bus. He's a great guy. He's done some things that I can't even believe he hasn't spoken about. But our own very much Sergeant Hair Club, Dave Richards, will be the first guest that we oh, have. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah, he might as well be. Hey, man. If he's going to give us a hard time about not doing that one greatest story that never told podcast mm. for one week, then we are going to bring him on and absolutely have a wonderful interview. And here's the thing. I just want you to know it might this. Be, it might be three different episodes of us just talking to him. I just want to say this about him. He's a boss who we respect. We have worked yeah. with him for almost 15 years. And had a great time. He's been wonderful, but there's no BS with him. Like, you get things done or you don't. He has told us stories where I'm like, I cannot believe I work for you. You are a worse person than I'll me. I'll give you so- one instance. We went to Chicago. He tried to kick down the door of the place that he used to live in, screaming at the people inside to let him into his mother house. He hadn't lived there in over a decade. Do you know the voice of reason? In a decade. Me. Yeah. And I remember yeah. telling him about that and moment. And he's on a when deck. I have to be your voice of reason. I don't know what you know about Chicago, but you don't try to break into someone's house without being shot. So he'll be our first guest for 2020. And that's our the greatest boss. story never told. Enjoy, everybody, and uh, Happy New Year's. Have a and, very uh, good happy holiday, holidays. man. Absolutely. And if you don't have a Happy New Year, honestly, God, it's not a You've been listening to The Greatest Story Never Told with Miles and Thrill on Radio.com. Oh, man! A Double Flush Production.